The Boeing C-17 Globemaster III is one of the most successful military transport aircraft in modern history. Renowned for its strategic lift capabilities, global reach and versatility, it served as the backbone of the U.S. Air Force's heavy airlift fleet for decades. Yet in 2015, Boeing shut down the production line for this workhorse aircraft. Nearly a decade later, reports have surfaced that Boeing is reconsidering a restart of the C-17 production line. Why did it stop? And what's changed to reignite interest in this powerful airlifter? The Rise and Peak of the C-17 Program Developed in the 1980s and introduced into service in the 1990s, the C-17 Globemaster III was designed to meet the U.S. military's need for a long-range, heavy-lift transport aircraft that could operate in austere environments. With the ability to carry up to 170,900 pounds of cargo, land on short, unprepared runways, and fly intercontinental distances without refueling, the C-17 became a vital asset in both peacetime logistics and combat missions. Throughout the early 2000s, especially during the height of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the C-17 proved indispensable. Boeing ramped up production to meet U.S. and Allied demands. The U.S. Air Force ultimately procured 223 C-17s, and additional units were sold to foreign operators, including the United Kingdom, Australia, India, Qatar, the UAE, and Canada. The aircraft was widely regarded as a success, with strong reviews from operators and a high operational tempo worldwide. Why Boeing Stopped Production in 2015 Despite the aircraft's reputation and capability, Boeing ceased production of the C-17 in 2015. The reasons for this decision were a combination of strategic, economic, and logistical factors. The first, lack of new orders. By 2013, the U.S. government had completed its procurement of 223 aircraft, and there were no indications of future large orders from the Pentagon. The U.S. Air Force had met its strategic airlift goals with the existing fleet and prioritized other modernization programs such as the KC-46 tanker, F-35 Lightning II, and long-range strike bomber initiatives. Though international sales briefly extended the production line, orders from foreign customers slowed by 2014. Without steady commitments, Boeing found it financially unsustainable to keep the line open. The second, high operating and manufacturing costs. Operating the C-17 line at Boeing's Long Beach, California plant was expensive. The aircraft required specialized tooling, a large and skilled workforce, and an extensive supply chain. As the number of new orders declined, the per unit cost increased, making the aircraft less competitive in the global market. To mitigate losses, Boeing produced a few white tails aircraft built without a buyer in hopes of attracting last-minute customers. And the third, strategic shifts in U.S. defense planning. By the mid-2000s, the Pentagon was shifting its strategic priorities. While airlift remained important, budget constraints and a focus on multi-domain operations, cyber warfare, and emerging technologies meant fewer resources were allocated to traditional platforms like the C-17. The DoD viewed the existing fleet as sufficient, especially with improvements in sustainment and maintenance strategies. What's changed in 2024 and 2025? Now, nearly a decade after the last C-17 rolled off the assembly line, Boeing has publicly acknowledged that it's exploring a potential restart of production. This move has captured attention in both defense and aerospace circles. Several key developments have fueled this reconsideration. The global security environment has shifted dramatically. The Russia-Ukraine war increased tensions in the Indo-Pacific, and concerns over the rise of China have highlighted the need for rapid strategic mobility. Heavy-lift aircraft are once again a priority for militaries seeking to respond quickly to crises 
deliver humanitarian aid, and support global deployments. Nations that once hesitated to purchase the C-17, such as Germany, Japan, and Saudi Arabia, now reportedly regret missing the opportunity. With new threats emerging, the need for reliable, heavy airlift capabilities has re-entered strategic planning discussions. In mid-2025, media reports and statements from Boeing executives suggested that Japan had expressed interest in acquiring C-17s, possibly becoming the anchor customer for a renewed production effort. This could trigger a chain reaction of renewed interest from other allied nations. At the 2025 Paris Air Show, Boeing's Vice President of Global Services, Turbo Skogren, confirmed that the company was evaluating what it would take to bring the C-17 line back online, contingent on significant customer interest and sufficient orders. The current global fleet of C-17s, while still highly capable, is aging. Many aircraft have flown thousands of hours supporting disaster relief, military operations, and pandemic logistics over the past two decades. Operators are beginning to look at fleet sustainment or potential replacement in the next 10 to 15 years. If replacements aren't available, customers may push for production to resume rather than invest in alternatives with less proven reliability. While the Airbus A400M Atlas and Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules serve specific roles, neither matches the C-17's unique combination of payload capacity, range, and STOL, short takeoff and landing, ability. For countries needing to move tanks, large vehicles, or outsized cargo quickly across long distances, the C-17 remains unparalleled. Can the C-17 line actually be restarted? Reopening the C-17 production line would be a complex and expensive endeavor. The original Long Beach production facility was closed and repurposed. Much of the tooling has been dismantled or placed in storage. The workforce is dispersed and some suppliers are no longer in business. Restarting production could cost billions of dollars, and Boeing would need multiple confirmed international orders to make it financially feasible. However, Boeing's recent statements indicate that the company is seriously exploring this possibility, particularly if Japan or a consortium of countries commits to a sizable purchase. A second life for the Globemaster? The story of the C-17 Globemaster III is far from over. What was once seen as a completed chapter in U.S. aerospace manufacturing may be on the verge of a revival. Strategic airlift is once again in demand, and the C-17 proven, capable, and beloved by its operators remains unmatched. Suppose Boeing can secure sufficient international interest and navigate the technical challenges of restarting production. In that case, the Globemaster III may soon soar again, bridging continents and crises in the service of both defense and humanity.